What's up guys and welcome to this build video. This is my monthly build for the month of July. I'm actually building a higher end system. This is gonna cost around $2,600 total if you buy most of the parts as you see here. The idea is that if you've settled on the highest end gaming GPU that you can get right now, which is the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, which is gonna cost around $1,200, maybe even $1,300, what parts would be good or reasonable or cost effective to pair with that very expensive GPU? To that end, we have the build I'm showing off today and I have a brand new CPU you to show you guys the new AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Excellent! The Mod Mic series by Antlion features three broadcast quality mics, which can be attached to headphones or a VR visor to create the ultimate headset. The Mod Mic Uni's analog 3.5mm connection works with nearly any device, including Xbox and PlayStation controllers. The Mod Mic USB is USB powered with superior sound quality in both omni and unidirectional settings, and the flagship Mod Mic Wireless features noise cancelling and high quality recording modes, and is the only mic in the world that delivers a full 16 bit 48kHz audio signal via aptX low latency encoding. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So let's begin this video with an unboxing of these. Uh, this is actually more than one CPU, courtesy of our good friends over at AMD. Now, AMD has had their 3000 series of CPUs out for quite some time. They're based in seven nanometer manufacturing process, and they have been very well received because they are both powerful as well as energy efficient, as well as not terribly overpriced. AMD is now launching these binned variants of some of the more popular CPUs in this lineup, starting with the 3600XT. So there's a 3600X and an XT now. They're basically all gonna run maybe one or 200 megahertz faster than their previous counterparts, but the prices are also resetting. So the 3600XT is gonna sell for the 3600X's original retail price of $250. The 3800XT will sell for the 3800X's original retail price of $400. And the 3900 XT that we're building with today is going to be back at its original price of $500. And as I mentioned in the builds video for this month where I parted out this system, you can of course swap the 3900 XT that I'm using today, which is a $500 chip for a 3900 X non-T, which is now selling for $420. The 3800 XT of course for that 400 bucks. Or of course going down the line to any of these other Ryzen 3000 series processors. I would not dip down into the 2000 series of CPUs because this is a gaming system that's paired up with an RTX 2080 Ti, and this is a GPU that you want to give some breathing room, especially if you're gonna try playing at maybe a 1080, 240 hertz setup or something like that. The other main difference to be aware of with these new XT variants of the Ryzen 3000 CPUs is that two of them, the 3800 XT and 3900 XT, uh, do not ship with CPU coolers in the box anymore. They're assuming that you'll be installing an aftermarket cooler, which a lot of people probably would be if you're buying a CPU that costs a little bit more expensive. 3600 XT does still come with the Wraith Aspire cooler though. So let's run down the parts I am building with today and uh, most of these are the same parts that I have linked in the description but there are a few that I've swapped here and there, uh, notably the power supply because those are really hard to find in stock right now. More on that in just a second though. Let's focus on the key features. First off that Ryzen 9 3900 XT which uh, I'm looking forward to trying out. Again no cooler in the box so for that we're going with the Noctua NHU12S which you can find for around $70 and I find this to be a very nice middle of the road solution for aftermarket cooling because it's $70 so you're not paying 100 bucks plus like you would with an all-in-one. It is an air cooler so you don't have to worry about a pump failing or a leak like you might also with a water cooling solution and it's a Noctua product which means you can be pretty much guaranteed that it is, it is precision designed and it ships with a very nice fan that's going to stay nice and quiet while also keeping things cool. I considered using the Noctua NHD15 which is a larger cooler which does have a little bit more performance than this one. However that one will cost $100 and it is a little bit too big unfortunately unfortunately to use with this case. The case is the Fantex P400A by the way, but if you do get a larger size case and you wanted a slightly improved cooler, uh, maybe consider the NHD15 as well. Now you guys forced me to use an RTX 2080 Ti for this build and that's fine, I accept that, but I am obliged to point out that you could save maybe four to five hundred dollars on this build by going with an RTX 2080 Super, which would be the one step down from the 2080 Ti. It's also worth mentioning that Nvidia is working on the 3000 series of GPUs, which we're expecting to probably launch sometime in 2020. So if you're looking towards the future,
future, then it might not be the best time to invest in an RTX 2080 Ti. But as I said in the monthly builds video, if you want the best gaming GPU right now, this is the one you're gonna need to get. The case once again is the Fantex P400A. The A is the airflow version of this case that has mesh on the front, so it has much better airflow and thermals internally than the other variants of the P400. It's also nice that the digital version of this comes with three RGB fans that are integrated into the front, and I think there's a decent chance I might be adding some more fans in today, but it does come with enough to get you started, and this case should retail for about $90, which is a good price for the feature set. For the power supply for this build to pair with a RTX 2080 Ti, what I would look for is a 750 watt, 80 plus gold rated unit, and then you'd probably want one from a reputable manufacturer like a Corsair or an EVGA or a Seasonic. Perhaps a Cooler Master as well. You can look for modular power supplies, but the fact is power supplies are really, really expensive right now relative to what they typically cost. So you're gonna have to deal with what's available on the market. And the PSU that I have listed in the description, which is hopefully still in stock, should cost you around $120 for those key features of 750 watts and 80 plus gold. Our motherboard is the MSI MAG B550 Tomahawk. The B450 Tomahawk, the previous version of this board on the prior chipset was really, really popular and I recommend it all the time. MSI has done a good job with the B550 Tomahawk as well when it comes to the power delivery and the cooling. It's not quite as much of a bang for the buck proposition now since this one is gonna cost you around $190, but you do get PCI Express 4.0 compatibility. And of course, AMD has promised us that the 500 series of motherboards will have support for the Ryzen 4000 series CPUs, which we're also expecting later in 2020, so that gives you a little bit of an upgrade path. Rounding things out with memory, I have this G-Skill Trident Z kit, which I've used multiple times. The one I have linked in the description is a 3600 speed Trident Z Neo kit, which is specifically made to work with the Ryzen CPUs. You're gonna want 3600 speed memory, and the RGB is of course optional, but since this build is a little bit more blingy and a little bit higher end with the $2600 price tag, I found it to be an, an acceptable use case for RGB LEDs. Finally, for storage, I'm recommending a one terabyte NVMe SSD. I am building with the WD Black SN750 today. This is a really good one when it comes to the PCI Express 3.0 NVMe SSDs, and you can actually find these for around $130 to $150 right now for the one terabyte version. So something to keep in mind if you wanted a slight upgrade for your core system storage, but of course the $105 Corsair P1 that I have linked in the description will also do you just fine. It's just a matter of some peak numbers, read and write speeds, that the WD Black would be a little bit faster with. So as I often do with my monthly builds, I'll point out quirks and unique things with this build as I put it together, but this is not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so definitely check out my beginner's guide to building a gaming PC if you want something that's a little bit more in detail going through stuff like CPU installation and everything. That said, I think I've done enough talking to start this video out. I have my trusty screwdriver, so let's put this thing together. This is my first time building in the P400A, so I wanted to give it a, a quick closer look before we move on. And again, uh, one of the main points of this one with the A version is this mesh all the way down the front, which uh, provides a lot of airflow. Also, it's just finely perforated mesh, so this acts as a filter as well, rather than having a filter behind it. So it provides some dust filtration, still allows air to flow through. And I also need to give a huge shout out to Fantex directly because when I was procuring parts for this build, sometimes I just order parts online, sometimes I get them directly from the manufacturer. I ordered a P400A from Newegg. I ordered it next day shipping and it said it shipped out and then it never arrived. So I had to kind of last minute be like, hey Fantex, do you have one of these to provide to me? They dropped it off here in person. So big shout out to them for handling that. Our tempered glass side panel is held on by four of these little thumb screw units here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And then it just sits on those nubs. So it's held fairly securely in place. Internally, we have a nice painted interior, plenty of room to work with. Got a couple 2.5 inch drive mounts uh, behind here, and these have metal trays on them. That's nice as well. And a basement area down here for the power supply lets us tuck cables away that we, that we find unsightly. There are the three included pre-mounted digital RGB fans that are at the front of the case. And then you've got uh, space for a 240 millimeter all-in-one uh, radiator up at the top if you wanted to, and a rear 120. We do have a little bit of a magnetic dust filter there on top that just sort of sits in place. Pretty standard for a case of this price. 
And then up here, we've got a power button. We've got a reset button tucked under here. There is a fan controller as well as RGB controls. Uh, so you can access those buttons right there. And then for IO, we've got a couple USB 3.0 and a mic and headphone jack. And again, I pointed it out in the planning video, but the main thing that I think I might swap out for this would be if you could find a case that has USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C front panel header, that would be nice to have because that is something that is featured with the B550 Tomahawk. Our 3900 XT is installed and we're getting the brackets set up for our Noctua cooler. Noctua knows that you're a big boy or girl and that you can install your own thermal paste. So it does not come with thermal paste pre-applied on the bottom. Kind of nice and shiny and reflective and smooth that contact plate is though. Noctua does a pretty good job with their instructions. Uh, so all you got to do is a few spacers here that go on top of the existing AM4 bracket that ships with the motherboard. Then just some screws down through there to mount these two uh, crossbars here. And then the mounting point for the cooler is actually these two spots right here. So here's our little NVMe M.2 drive, one terabyte WED black, and this is a PCI Express 3.0 NVMe drive, which means it's limited to PCIe 3.0 speeds. One of the benefits of going with this B550 chipset motherboard, and this would also apply to uh, X570 chipset motherboards, is that PCIe 4.0 support. B550 has four lanes that come directly from the CPU that will give you the best support for your PCIe 4.0 drive. And then there's some lanes that route through the chipset that might give you more M.2 slots on the motherboard, but they'll be PCIe. 3.0. So we want to take this PCIe 3.0 drive and install it in the PCIe 3.0 slot to leave our PCIe 4.0 slot open for the future. You can see that diagrammed here in the manual. You have one M.2 slot here going straight to the processor. Then you've got another M.2 over here that goes through a switch that goes through the PCH back to the processor and that will be PCIe 3.0. This one will be 4.0. Thankfully MSI has labeled these very clearly in the manual. M.2 underscore one slot is from the AMD processor and M.2 underscore two slot is from the the B550 chipset. So over here where the motherboard layout is, we can see that M.2 underscore one is this upper slot and M.2 underscore two is the lower slot. Or you could just skip all that nonsense and just look at the heat spreader on the slot and note that this one says Gen 4 and this one does not. That's that's a little bit of a quicker way of figuring that out. All that is to say though, that we're gonna install our PCIe 3.0 drive to this lower slot and then we'll have that expansion capability if we ever added on an upgraded PCIe 4.0 M.2 NVMe SSD, we'd put it up there. Okay, we've got the motherboard installed, so now we're gonna worry about wiring some stuff up to it. I've been waiting to do the power supply till later on, and that's just personal preference. Of course, there's more than one way to do a build, but that keeps the power supply cables out of the way while I wire everything else up. This case has uh, front panel connectors like a typical case would, also HD audio and a USB 3.0 header. Then you might notice there's a bunch more cables here because it does have that integrated fan controller. It has a digital or addressable uh, RGB uh, pinout here. One, you can connect up to the motherboard to synchronize the RGB fans on the front with your motherboard's RGBs, and then it's got a pass-through, so you can actually control more RGB fans through that. So if you were to kit out the rest of the case with three more, for example, you could uh, still have them all controlled by the same controller or pass through the control from your motherboard so they should all sync up. So all that is to say, in order to connect everything up from the case, we need our front panel connectors, the USB 3.0, the HD audio for the mic and headphone jack, this which will plug into the motherboard so that the uh, RGB controller can get the RGB color commands from the motherboard and sync up with it. The lighting controller does have a single SATA connector that we'll need to connect power to from the motherboard. And then since that controller is only controlling the RGB, each of those three front fans has a three pin fan header that we'll need to plug into the available headers on the motherboard.
So we now have everything wired up. Motherboard is plugged in when it comes to power. All the power coming from the power supply down up here, running up the right side and coming across here. I use one of these little pass-through areas here to bring the power through for the, what we need for the graphics card, which is the last thing we're gonna install. And very convenient to have these little uh, Velcro straps here down the middle so we can take the bulk of the cables, tie them up and get them somewhat tidy. Now, if I have a complaint about this case, with all due respect to my friends over at Fantex, this side panel did come a little bit tweaked and it's taking a little bit of extra effort to get it to slide on. If you do have a side panel that's not going on smoothly or that's just not lining up, especially if it's one of these that has to hook in in multiple places, here's my trick for doing that. This is also very effective if you have a lot of cables going on back here that are causing it to bulge out and not want to set down properly. Basically, you just lay the case flat on its side this way. That way you can set the side panel on this way and kind of get both hands across the sides that slot in. And then hopefully, there, pull it on and now the side panel's back on. And with the graphics card installed and the power all hooked up, this system is pretty much assembled and good to go. So I'm going to give us a test boot. There was a, there was a weird delay there for a second, but it does seem to be working. <laughs> And look at that, we have pretty RGB lights. Uh, things that are supposed to light up are lit up. That means that we hopefully plugged in all the cables the proper way. Now case fans or graphics cards fans will often spin up to a high RPM when you first start a system up for the first time, uh, but they'll sometimes tame themselves and then sometimes you'll have to go into the UEF or BIOS and set a fan profile. I'm happy to say that this build right out of the gate is uh, very quiet. My next steps are going to be to get Windows installed so I can actually do some testing and some gaming with this system. So I'm excited to try out its performance and I will be doing a follow-up video for that. So let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like to see tested with this system in that video. I'm kind of thinking I'd like to kit the whole thing out with fans. So we could probably do an additional four fans with this, two in the top, one in the rear, and then do push-pull with the uh, CPU cooler. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing the performance with the fans as is or the fans with adding all that stuff. And of course, if you're interested in links to the parts that I've used today, Today or in any of my tutorial videos that will give you a little bit more of a step-by-step -step walkthrough in building a system just like this, check the links in the video description down below. While you're down there, if you want to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, that is much appreciated. And you'll also find a link to my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other super sweet merch to help keep you clothed and comfortable throughout the summer. That is all for this one though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, leave me some comments to let me know what you guys would like to see in the follow-up testing video for this system, since I still have the whole month of July to accomplish that. Thanks again, you guys, and we'll see you next time.